good, dude. You need to go back and listen to it. <laughs> really pumping, dude. Told, said that Danielle won the national group shoot. It was Samantha. Yeah. And then after, right after that, she ran up the bleachers and they interviewed her. She had a mask on as she's talking, and they gave her a T-shirt for being player of the game. Or whatever. But yeah, they, they asked her that, and they said, so, so your three-point game, that, that's usually how you play? She goes, no, I'm pretty much a passer. <laughs> no, I just, I just thought I got to step it up because Riley's not here, right? <laughs>
Session. Ball's rolling across the floor.
better camera work for missing plays. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she said. She's crazy. He's worse than Lady <laughs> Tell her there's a job opening for that. Mm -hmm. And then she said, just joking. <laughs> Good save. Mm -hmm. Everybody's like,
as we honor our freedom and the United States of America with the playing of our national anthem. record here today and I'm sure there's nothing more Marion Center would like to do than to make a blemish in that record you know, some of the folks from Marion Center listening in I'm sure I'll get uh, I'm sure I'll get some critiques whenever I show back up at work on uh, Monday and that's what it's all about uh, we gotta love it so and jump ball, and it's going to be controlled by Punksy. And Gribble brings that ball up over half court, surveys the scene. Looks like at the moment, Marion Center's in a man-to-man -man off uh, defense. Kind of surprising. There's Pearson Riley wide open underneath. Nobody saw her there. And we, with that ball, drives. It's stopped. It's back out the K-9. Stiff's thought about driving. Spun around, hands it off to Weaver. Weaver drives down the lane. Going to be a block. Draws that foul. I believe it's going to be on the floor, if I'm not mistaken. And I think that foul's on number 23. It's going to be Keely Elkins' first foul. Weaver tried to drive the lane and got stopped there. 
Shyock with the ball, hands it back to Caitlin Gribble for three off the uh, no good. Shyock with the rebound, she takes it into the land. She's going to draw a foul on number 30, I believe. That's going to be on Jersey Coble. No. It's going to be another one on Elkin. I didn't think she was in the vicinity. <laughs> I think he picked the wrong girl there, and that's not going to be good for Marion Center in the long run, I don't think. And that shot's off the front of the iron, off the side, no good. And second shot coming. Elkin gets a seat on the bench here. And second shot, no good. So Shiaw comes up empty on it. And we're going to have, eh, I thought we were going to have full court defense, but not. Ackerman bounces that ball down low to Nevada Armstrong, and she misses the put. So Presley brings that ball up, gets it to Gribble, almost out of her reach, but she corrals it, brings it around the top of the key, looks to drive, leaves it for K-9. Presley stops, pops a three. It's good! Chloe Presley breaks the ice for Punksy with a three, and a steal by Gribble, lays it up, no good. Another one, no good. She needs to get that ball above the rim, and she does on the third try. Does Caitlin Gribble. Puts two in for Punksy and scores five. Nothing. We were going to have a little bit of a hip action there on. Uh, it's going to be called on Weaver for her first foul. And Center gets that ball in. It's going to be Miller bringing that ball up through the top of the key, looking down low. And it's going to be blocked by, and it's going to be off of Gribble's foot out of bounds. It's going to be Marion Center's ball. I'm going to have Shauna Cook bringing that ball in, and she gets it into Armstrong over to Miller. Every time she turns around, there's a punksy defender in her way, and she's not enjoying that, I'm sure. She goes left with it, high off the glass, no good. Going to be a rebound. Oh. Shyock had it, but Jersey Coble wanted a piece of that, and they get tied up here for a jump ball. It's going to go Marion Center's way. The Armstrong winging the ball in. Gets it in Miller. Miller a quick two, and it's off the iron. No good. Going to be off of Shauna Cook out of bounds. Punksy ball. We was going to inbound that ball to Chloe Presloyd. No pressure on the, on the Marion Center defense here as of yet. Presley gets that ball over to Gribble. Gribble drives down the lane, straight to the hoop, uncontested. Two more for Caitlin Gribble. And have Ackerman bringing that ball up. Got herself into a little trouble. She stopped, pops a three, uh, air ball, no good. It's going to be Punksy's ball. Presley gets a ball into Weaver this time. Punksy out to a quick 7 0 lead with five and a half to go here in the first period. Gribble gets that ball. She goes left with it, right to the hoop. Nice bounce to K-9. She wasn't ready. Press Lloyd for three off the iron, no good. And it's going to be saved by Armstrong to Cook, to Ackerman. Ackerman looks to drive. Nice drive by Ackerman. Just bad angle, on, uh, and it's going to be a jump ball. It's going to go Punksy's way this trip. It's a nice drive by Ackerman as she weaved through traffic there. And just uh, couldn't make that uh, easy layup. So with five to go, score sits 7 nothing. Press Lloyd brings the ball up over half court. Crossover, gets to Weaver on the side. And she being guarded heavily there by Armstrong. Press Lloyd over to Shyock. Shyock looking for help. Gets it to Weave. Weave weaves around, uh, around Cook there and then turns around, backs it back out. Dribble over to Weaver. Weaver for three. No good. Off the iron. Nice job by Punksy as they scuffle for the ball and end up with it. Chloe Presloyd going to hand that ball off to Weaver. Weaver goes down the lane, tries to lay it in, going to draw a foul. I think that's going to be on Armstrong, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Nevada Armstrong. Her first foul. We were first shot, no good. Punks a little dry on the foul line here. They better tighten that up. All these 
free throws missed are not going to be good. The punksy offensive attack here. And the second one's good by Weave. Puts her first point in. 8 nothing punksy with 4.25 to go here in the first quarter. Miller brings that ball up. Stop, pops a three. Off the iron, no good. And a rebound by Danielle Gribble. Gribble drives the floor, pulls it back. Moves it over to the top of the key, and she's going to take that little shot from the foul line. No good. And Ackerman uh, thought maybe Chloe Presloy touched that ball last, but unfortunately it was her that touched it last. So, punksy ball. And get it into Gribble. Gribble with a little eight-footer, and she drains it. Caitlin Gribble, hot hand for punks here with six of the ten with 3.57 to go. Miller drives the ball down, pulls it back out as we've got in her way there. We were harassing her. She goes baseline, tries to lay it up and in. No good. Uh, I guess you could call that a rebound by Cook. Shot by Ackerman. No good. It touched the little nylon strap that pulls the hoop back up. So it's going to be an out-of-bounds going punksy way. Gribble brings the ball up over her course, spins, gets it to Chloe Presloid, wide open three for Chloe off the front of the iron, no good. We've almost had that rebound, but Ackerman takes it away, drives the floor. Nice crossover by Ackerman, fires it up. Maybe a two-shot foul. I believe Chloe Presloid is going to get called for the hack on that one. Ackerman with her first shot. Marion Center still looking to put a point up. It's not going to happen with that foul shot. And Maddie Shyout comes in. And Caitlin Gribble's going to get a break. Second shot. In and out, no good. Rebound Shyout. Marion Center dry as they're better than halfway through the first quarter. And they still haven't put a point on yet. Gribble with that. Shoots the three. And overshoots that off the glass, but no iron. Armstrong to Ackerman. Ackerman not afraid to fire it up. And she drains a three for Marion Center. Alexa Ackerman with the first three points. 2.48 to go here. Score sits 10-3. Weaver goes left and gets it to Gribble. Gribble looks inside, gets it to Chloe Prestoid. She comes around the corner, and it's going to be an in one situation as number 30, Jersey Coble. Got too much body on Chloe Prestoid. She'll go to the line for the end one. And she misses. Huncy is one for. Five, I think, or yeah, one for five on foul shots. Ackerman drives the floor, gonna be rebounded by uh, Armstrong, and she lays it back up in for two. So, score now 12 5, in favor of Punksy. 2.20 to go here in the first period. Weaver spins, spins back. Oh, oh my, she almost traveled. Nice underhand. Oh, just didn't get it above the rim. Chloe Prestoid drove that baseline, tried to lay it up and in, and no dice. Ackerman with a spin. I'll give Ackerman credit. She is not afraid to take it to the hoop, and she puts two more in. Four Marion Center score, 12-7, 155 to go. And Gribble dribbles over to the left wing, comes around, and she's going to lay it up high, and it's going to be a block. Two shots coming. I believe that's going to be on Armstrong. Yep. First shot, and it's good. Danielle Gribble, first point for her here of the game. Chloe Presley's going to get a break. Catch her breath. Minute 45 here to go in the first period. Second shot coming for Gribble. And it's good. Makes both of them. Going to have a substitute. Armstrong comes out. Lipsy comes in. Okay, Cook inbounds that ball to Ackerman. They get it into Lipsy. Lipsy fires a three up. And a bank's open. 
Maya Lipsy with three of her own. Cribble being harassed by Ackerman. Nice inside pass by Cribble. Weaver just couldn't get herself squared around for that lay-in, and she misses it. Marion Center comes out with it. Lydia Miller drives the floor, looks inside. No help. She drives down the lane, puts a lefty up, and it goes. Nobody wanted to get in front of her, and they bring the score right back. 14-12 here with a minute to go in the first period. Marion Center with quite a, another bad pass by Punksy. We talked about that before the game. Punks is going to limit the turnovers. And tighten up here. Uh, going to have to get a new ball for whatever reason. Uh, scorekeepers disinfecting that one. Randy Wrights must have touched it and got his cooties on it. So they get a new ball. Got to love Randy. He's doing the, the janitorial work and the athletic director work here today. And we appreciate everything he does for all these kids. Miller for three. Off the iron, no good. Nice rebound by Shyock as she boxes out. Gets it ahead to Gribble. Gribble, nice bounce pass. Down low to Kirsten Riley. She puts it away for two. Beautiful pass by Gribble to K-9. She threaded a needle there as the defense was on Kirsten. Just put it where it needed to be. Twenty-four seconds here. Punksy sits 16-12. Nice shot by Caitlin Gribble for two. Miller brings the ball up the floor, being guarded by Gribble. And ball's gonna be rebounded by Shyock. She's doing a nice job on the boards here today, and she gets it ahead to Gribble. Five seconds left. Nice head fake, drives the lane, uncontested layup. That's going to be the end of the first period. Punksy pulls out to a 20 to 12 lead after one. Going to take a break with the team. You're listening to a Punksy Sports Day on Fox Sports 100.9. Hey everyone, Ed Yonner here from Advanced Disposal. At Advanced Disposal Services, we are driven to deliver, providing the very best in customer service while protecting our environment. At Advanced Disposal, our motto is service first, safety always. Our trucks are equipped with the latest safety technology tools. Onboard video cameras, backup cameras, and backing sensors maintain the highest degree of safety for our employees, our customers, and others who share the roads with. Our customers and our communities deserve the very best. Advanced Disposal, we are driven to deliver. On C High School Hoops on Fox Sports. FM 100.9. Okay, welcome back here to Punxsy High School. Teams are in the intermission here between the first and second periods. Ready for our second eight minutes of basketball. Punxsy leads 20 to 12. Uh, uh, Marion Center pulled within two. We had 14-12 and Punxsy six unanswered to pull away 20 to 12. So it's gonna be Marion Center's ball on the possession and they get it into Ackerman. Ackerman brings the ball up over half court. Being guarded by Gribble. She gets to Miller. Miller looks inside. They have pick and nice switch by Punksy there. High off the glass. And Weaver couldn't come down with it as Cook comes out with it. There's going to be a shot by Miller. And she drains that three. Lydia Miller with a three. Uh, sets the score at 20 to 15. Weaver brings the ball up over half court. Looking down. Gets it to press Lloyd down on the baseline. She pulls it around. Bounces it into Gribble. Gribble went oh, off the side of the iron. No good. Gets it over to Weaver. Weaver drives the lane. Just Weaver's having some serious trouble getting that ball above the rim here. If she gets that ball a few inches higher, she has six or eight points already. And we're going to have a push. I believe that should have been after the shot. But I'm sure she's going to get three shots on this one. No? It was after the shot. Okay. Good call, ref. As Ackerman hit the floor hard. Good sportsmanship by Gribble as she helps her up. Miller with that ball, bringing it around front. And looks inside. A little pick. Deep three by Miller. No good. Kirsten Riley with the rebound. She's wearing an ungodly mask. She took an elbow uh, a couple games ago. And she's been having a little bit of issues with uh, uh, the 
black eye not going away, we'll call it. And it's going to be off of... I thought that ball was off of Coble, but evidently it went off of somebody from Punxsy there, and I missed it. So it's going to be Cook taking that ball out on the, underneath the hoop of her own. And they split the difference, and it's going to be inbounded to Coble. Coble gets it over to Lydia Miller. Miller looks inside, gets it over to Lipsy. She thought about firing one up, and she had a decent pass. Uh, nobody wants it, I guess. And went right between Miller and, and Coble. Nobody went for the ball, and it rolls out of bounds. So Punksy's ball. Weaver gets it over the timeline. Six and a half to go here. Score sits 20 to 15, Punksy. Weaver drives down. Good defense by Marion Center on their switches there. As nice job by Chloe as she spins it around. Tips it back out to Gribble. Gribble over to Caitlin Gribble for a three off the front of the... Oh, didn't even hit iron. I thought it was going to hit iron off the side. But from my perspective, it looked like it was going to hit. But it is an air ball. Goes Marion Center's way. 6.15 to go. Score 20-15. to 15. Ackerman brings the ball over half court. Looks inside. Guarded by Shyock. And they get it to Lipsy. Lipsy looks inside. And gets it to Coble. Coble spins. Gets it to Ackerman. Sets her a pick. Nothing doing. Shyock stays with her. That ball's going to be rebounded by uh, Prestoid. We're missing Riley Prestoid here today. Um, hopefully she'll be back in action here uh, Wednesday night versus Brockway. Nice job by Weave. And she... Misses another layup. Come on, Weave. Got to have those. I'm sure her dad's not happy to none in the uh, front row. He's probably biting his teeth. She steals that ball from, and it gets it ahead to Caitlin Gribble, and she lays it up and in. Nice job by Sarah Weaver as they push that floor. Punksy takes a 22-15 lead. I believe it's going to be a 30-second timeout by... It's going to be a full timeout. We'll stay here anyways. I know everyone misses hearing my voice through these timeouts. Check my... Uh, only one person loves me from Cool Spring. we got to love all our text messages I get throughout the course of the games. Moxie sits with a 22-15 lead. 5.20 to go here in the second period. <clears throat> Punksy is pretty much running with six players here today. Like I said there at the end there, before Punksy had that last uh, run. Uh, Riley Prestoid not here today. We're hoping she gets uh, gets well and gets back on the floor here. So Punksy could definitely use her presence, uh, not just for this game, any game. And we miss having Riley on the floor. Okay, so it's going to be Marion Center's ball far into their floor as Punksy just scored. First no in for Marion Center. Ackerman, Miller, Lipsy, Cook. And Elkin has made her way back onto the floor here with a couple fouls, her and Armstrong both. Uh, Liddy Miller thought about going, going left on canine there but thought better of it and she gets it around to Ackerman Ackerman's not afraid she takes it into the lane blocked by Gribble Gribble taking a three on one gets it to Weave Weave misses another layup and they get that ball ahead to Ackerman as she has a nice jump and uh, it's going to be a foul on Gribble nice jump stop there by Ackerman and Gribble wasn't fooled by the jump stop, but she got uh, got the hack in there. So Ackerman going to shoot two, and she makes the first one. Gribble going to get a break. That's her second foul. I only had her down for one, but that's her second. Ackerman with her second. We go live on a miss, and there is a miss. Shyock with the rebound. Gets it ahead to Gribble. She pulls it back out. Dribbles it up, gets it to Weaver. Weaver goes baseline. She's going to make a layup. There we go. Sarah Weaver. Broke the ice. Got herself two points to go with her foul shot. So she has three total at the moment. 4.30 to go here. 24-16. 
but uh, Elkin off the uh, glances off the side and Weave going to go left. She has one person to beat. Nice cross over by Weave. She misses her another layup. And it's going to be a jump ball. It's going to stay Punksy's ball. Score 24-16 with 4-11 to go. Chloe Prestoy takes that ball out. Looks. Gets it over in the far side to Gribble. Gribble. Nice crossover as Ackerman can't keep up with her. Chloe Prestoy for three. She drains it. Four minutes to go here. Score sits 27-16. Cook going to get that ball down on the low post and do a spin move and gets hacked by Shyock. That's a fifth foul for Punksy. Both teams sitting with five fouls. And she's going to brook that first one. No good. And Armstrong comes in for Lipsy. Armstrong and Elkin both in with two fouls. Second shot off the iron, no good. Rebound, Chloe Presloyd. Presloyd being harassed there a little bit, but she finds safe ground, gets it over to Gribble. Gribble looks inside. Nice head fake. She takes the ball to the hoop. High off the glass, no good. Chloe high off the glass, and it falls for Chloe Presloyd. The girls are getting themselves way under the hoop. And a nice job by Shyock, another rebound. As Gribble drives the floor, a nice crossover. Ackerman finds her. It's going to be an in one situation. As Ackerman got. And we're going to have a substitute since it's an in one. Amy Poole coming in for Maddie Shyock. Shot is up and good. Danielle Gribble with an and one. Miller drives, goes left, high off the glass, off the iron, no good, and gets her own rebound, fires it back up. <laughs> that was a nice uh, underhand toss back towards the hoop, got some rim on it, but going to be fouled. Going to take two shots, and that foul is going to be on Chloe Presloyd, her second. Miller's first shot's good. And going to lie, want to miss. Miller toes the line. Upcoming shot is around about and in. So both her shots were good. Score sits 32 18 with 3.14 to go here in the second period. Weaver's getting a break as. Amy Poole, Gribble, the Gribble girls, both are in, K-9, and Chloe Presley. Gribble stops, pops a three, and it's good. Danielle Gribble stops and drains a three for Punksy. Ackerman drives into the lane, fires it up left, no good. Kirsten Riley with the rebound, gets it out to Danielle Gribble. Gribble driving the floor, looking for help, and she's going to, it's going to go right off of her knee and out of bounds. Marion Center coach is not happy that Danielle Gribble just went coast to coast. I could hear him from here. There is no reason, and I can't disagree. Someone's got to stop the ball before it gets that deep into the into the key. Ackerman stops, pops that deep three. Oh, almost went off the iron. No good. Danielle Gribble trying to get her twisted up. She goes to the hoop, and there's going to be a foul called. That might be on Elkin. And it is. She's picking up her third foul. Sure, she's going to get some help here. And uh, first shot for Gribble. It's good. Elkin going to get a break. Having some bad luck in the wrong place at the right time. Second shot for Gribble. Up and good. 
it's uh, we got 2.25 to go here. Score sits 37-18. And Miller with the ball. Gets it over to Armstrong. Armstrong looking inside. Gets it back around to Ackerman. Nice pass into, and Kirsten Riley going to get the hack on Jersey Coble. Her first foul is K-9s. Coble for a shot. Look good. Second shot coming. Good. She doesn't mess around. I like that style. She gets the ball, stops, and shoots it. And she drains both of her foul shots. And nice backdoor cut by Caitlin Gribble. And Weave, she uh, has some trouble there. She lost it. Weaver for three off the left of the iron. Short off the left of the iron, no good. Amy Poole going to come back in. And someone's going to get a break. It's going to be Caitlin Gribble. So score sits 37 20, 156 to go here in the half. Miller brings the ball up, <clears throat> gets it over half court. Cook going to set the pick and roll, and Miller doesn't find her. Nice layup. No good. Shyock clears it out, and she's flying up the floor with it. This is Maddie Shyock as she pulls back out there and gets it to Gribble. Danielle Gribble surveys the scene. And she's going to hand, well, I thought she was going to, yeah, she does hand it off to Weaver. Weaver looks inside, gets it to Shyock. Helen needs a flash, and she did, but just a little bit too late. Timeout, Punksy. We'll take one with the team. You're listening to a Punksy Sports Day on Fox Sports 100.9. You're watching your favorite show, and you get a text. Looks like you just bought a diamond bracelet for $5,900 in Las Vegas. Or at least someone tried to. See, you've got card valet from Marion Center Bank. You can turn your Set spending limits and receive alerts when your card is used. Download the app to your phone, register your card, and you're done. And you can get back to your show. Card valet, only with Marion Central Bank. Member FDIC. On C High School Hoops on Fox Sports. FM 100.9 WECV. Okay, welcome back to Punxsy High School, where it's going to be Punxsy's ball on the near side here. They get it into Chloe Press Lloyd. Press Lloyd looks, surveys the scene, drives the right side, gets it to Weaver. Minute 10 to go here, score 37 20. Gribble with it, gets it to Chloe Press Lloyd. So you just sort of kind of playing a little pass and go, burning some time. Weaver goes baseline, lays it up and in. Nice job by Sarah Weaver. She drives the baseline and makes that lay in. Coble drives baseline, gonna be blocked by Weaver. Evidently, she got too much body on body there. 24 second foul for Weave. So he has three players with two fouls. Weaver, Pres, Lloyd, and Gribble. Caitlin Gribble, that is. Jersey Gribble doesn't mess around. She's 3 of 3 for foul shots. That's her three points. <laughs> the umpire, or the referee, doesn't have early time to get away. Kirsten Riley with the rebound. And she missed that shot. As I was uh, giving her kudos for her foul shooting efforts, she ends up missing it. So, sorry about that. Gribble, nice job with body control there, and she lays it up for two. That's 30 seconds to go here. Punksy leads by 20, 41 21. Marion centered uh, offense looks looks good. I mean, they, they've, they've got the pick and roll thing going on, and these girls just must not be comfortable. Oh, that was a travel. She. Went up with it, came back down as Caitlin Gribble got her hand on the on the basketball. Ten seconds left. Punksy up 20. Weaver drives the ball across half court. Gets it down low to Gribble. Gets it into Chloe Presloid as she spins, fires it up. Nice job by K9 to clean that mess up as the horn sounds. Punksy goes up 43-21. We'll go ahead and take a quick break. I'll add up some scores here and come back in a minute. You're listening to uh, Punxsy Sports Day on Fox Sports 100.9. Now 
are, matey. What kind of fancy treasure chest be this? What? Oh, this is not a treasure chest. This is an ATM machine. I can access my money here or at any other ATM across the world with my in-first bank card. Yeah, in this in-first bank, you speak of, hold your gold. Well, the in-first bank holds my gold, and since I signed up for their Casasa Rewards checking account, they literally pay me to bank with them. Casasa. So you're saying that they reward you for choosing them to protect your treasure? Casasa. Exactly. In-first bank. I'm ready, Jer. allows you the opportunity to earn monthly cash. All right. Most ATM fees nationwide. With Casasa Rewards, there's no minimum balance. Most banks charge you if your balance is below a certain amount. And there's no monthly service fee, where other banks actually charge you to hold your money. Smart of you not to allow yourself to get hornswoggled by those other banks. Tell me on the map where I can find me one of these in-first banks for my gold. Yeah, just go to infirstbank.com and see the full list of locations. Let's hit the high seas to the nearest in-first bank. <laughs> Member FDIC and equal housing lender. on C High School Hoops on Fox Sports, FM 100.9 WECZ. Okay, welcome back to Punxsutawney Area High School. We'll have a quick intermission here, and we'll get back to some commercials and be ready to start the second half here shortly. Uh, some point totals start with Marion Center. Leading the way at the moment is Lydia Miller with seven. Ackerman has six. Lipsy and Coble both have three, and Nevada Armstrong has two points to add up to 21 for Punxsy. We have three girls already with double digits. Uh, the Gribble girls both with 12. <clears throat> Chloe Presloyd with 10. Sarah Weaver with 5. And Kirsten Riley with 4 points. Uh, foul situations for Punxsy, like I said there at the end of the first half. Weaver, Presloyd, and Caitlin Gribble with 2. Kirsten Riley and Maddie Shawyock each with 1 for Marion Center. And uh, Kaylee Elkin come out of the gates and grab two fouls quick and ended up picking another one up in the second period to give her three fouls to start the second half with. And Nevada Armstrong has two, Jersey Coble and Alexa Ackerman, each with one foul. So that's pretty much a wrap for the first half here. We'll be back in about well, seven minutes or so for the start of the second half, and we'll get this game underway. You're listening to a Punxy Sports Day on Fox Sports 100.9. This is a Fox News alert. I'm Karen McHugh. The Senate has now reached a deal and will not be calling witnesses in the second impeachment trial of former President Donald Trump. This averts a prolonged trial. Closing arguments will now be presented by both sides today. Under the agreement, the information that a Republican congresswoman had made public about the former president's actions on the day of the January 6th riot would be entered into the record of the trial in exchange for Democrats dropping plans to deposition testimony from that congresswoman, Representative Jaime Herrera Butler of Washington. Once again, no witnesses will be called to testify in the impeachment trial of Donald Trump. The trial is now set to resume today with closing arguments and a vote on the verdict. America is listening to Fox News. Any credit card can offer cash back, but only Discover matches all the cash back you've earned at the end of your first year. It's like getting one of those birthday cards that's shaped like cash, so you already know there's cash inside before opening it. But in this case, it's stuffed with your first year cash back match, and you don't even have to send a thank you note. Cash back match. Only by Discover card. Learn more at discover.com slash match. Discover. Something brighter. If I'm not committing anymore, where do I really want to live? When you handle life's questions, Narrow Guided Investing helps you manage your portfolio and invest for your next move with the option to work with an advisor at a low cost and minimum. Merrill, a Bank of America company. Visit MerrillEdge.com slash investing goals to get started today. Investing involves risk. Merrill Lynch, Pierce, Fenner, and Smith Incorporated. Both are registered broker dealer and investment advisor member of IPC. Investment products are not FDIC insured or not bank guaranteed to may lose value. Have you been told you have cataracts? 
Is vision not as clear as it once was? Like you're looking through a dirty window. Or is it getting difficult to drive at night due to the glare around headlights? Each one of these can be scary because your sight is so precious to you. It's that very reason why your next call should be to the Laurel Eye Clinic. During cataract surgery, the Laurel Eye Clinic offers all the latest in lens technology and were recently chosen as one of only 31 centers in the entire country to offer the most innovative lens yet, Vivity. That's right. You have the option of the Vividi implant right here in your backyard. Patients have been amazed with the full range of vision following cataract surgery with Vividi. Not to mention combining Vividi and dropless cataract surgery might just be the perfect option for you. Dropless surgery and Vividi only here at the Laurel Eye Clinic. Call the Laurel Eye Clinic today at 1-800-494-2020 or go to laureleye.com to schedule your consultation. And why Laurel Eye? Because it's your eyes. The Laurel Eye Clinic, a better vision for you. Star matey, what kind of fancy treasure chest be this? What? Oh, this is not a treasure chest. This is an ATM machine. I can access my money here or at any other ATM across the world with my in-first bank card. Yeah, and this in-first bank you speak of holds the gold? Well, the in-first bank holds my gold, and since I signed up for their Casasa Rewards checking account, they literally pay me to bank with them. Casasa. So you're saying that they reward you for choosing them to protect your treasure? Casasa. Exactly. In-first bank Casasa Rewards checking allows you the opportunity to earn monthly cash rewards and refunds most ATM fees nationwide. With Casasa Rewards, there's no minimum balance. Most banks charge you if your balance is below a certain amount. And there's no monthly service fee, where other banks actually charge you to hold your money. Smart of you not to allow yourself to get hard swaggled by those other banks. Tell me on the map where I can find me one of these in-first banks for my gold. Just go to infirstbank.com and see the full list of locations. Let's hit the high seas to the nearest in-first bank. <laughs> Member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. Well, three noun, UPMC Hillman Cancer Care Center is available for you and your loved ones right here at the Punxsutawney Area Hospital. Our board-certified oncologist and hematologist, Dr. Kamenova and Dr. Ramanini, are part of our comprehensive team at the Punxsutawney Area Hospital that provides patients with the latest personalized cancer treatments and access to breakthrough clinical trials. New advances in cancer prevention, diagnosis, and treatment are being developed every day and brought to you close to home. You are not alone in your fight against cancer. Punxsutawney Area Hospital and Hillman Cancer Center are committed to providing you with the knowledge, inspiration, and specialty cancer care you need so you can face your diagnosis with confidence. Why travel for world-class cancer care when you don't have to? We're here for you as a part of the Punxsutawney community. Learn more about the UPMC Hillman Cancer Care Center at the Punxsutawney Area Hospital by visiting www.pah.org or call the office at 814-938-5212. At Punxsutawney Area Hospital, patients come first. Napa Midtown Auto Parts knows do-it-yourself. It's a new year. Might as well start it out on the right foot. Be sure to get in on the Napa Oil, Air, and Cabin Filter Special. Buy all three and get a $20 mail-in rebate. And there's a two for $6 break lead product special, too. See store for details. Offer good through the end of the month. We know do-it-yourself. Napa Midtown Auto Parts. Find us at 110 South Gilpin Street, Parkview. Call 938-6363. Search Napa Midtown Auto Parts on Facebook. That's Napa Midtown Auto Parts. You know, some people just don't care for their eyes as well as they should. But the fact of the matter is, your eyes are one of your most precious gifts. Why take chances with your eyesight? Gribble Eye Care can give you a whole new view of the world. Professional eye examination, cataract surgery, and a great selection of glasses and contacts. Gribble Eye Care is your family's total vision center. You depend on your eyes. Depend on Gribble Eye Care. Call 938-4777 for an appointment. Gribble Eye Care. Walker Auto Parts in Punxsutawney. Your locally owned Auto Plus Auto Parts store can help you with small and large auto repairs. Top-notch experts who strive to give you the best service and parts at the best prices. All at Walker Auto Parts, your locally owned Auto Plus Auto Parts store. Visual Impact Printing in downtown Punxsutawney is the place to go for all your custom design needs. Church and details made specifically for you and your businesses. Visual Impact Printing wishes the Chucks good luck in tonight's game. Think more, save more. More Propane in Fall Street. As your locally owned and operated propane supplier, More Propane knows the importance of community and the kids that grow up in it. We would like to wish all of the student athletes the best during this high school basketball season. You're giving me a back, Jerry. All your goals. Must be high school hoops on Fox Sports. FM 100.9 WECV.
Okay, welcome back here to Punxsutawney Area High School. Ready to start the second half. The Marion Center Lady Stingers versus the Punxsutawney Lady Chucks. <clears throat> Rock and roll here. Marion Center gets the ball in the possession arrow. Stoller's back in for Punxy as we speak. As well as uh, everyone but Elkin for Marion Center as her cousin, Nevada Armstrong, gets the start for the second half, being she had three fouls. She's gonna take a break here so she doesn't get herself out of the game too quick. Nice lay-in by, a nice try for the lay-in there by Coble, but no go. Uh, she looked as if she thought maybe there was a little bit too much body contact there on that play, but no call. So we play on, Chloe Presley drives left, gets it into K-9, and she gets that ball blocked as Cook comes out of there with it. Coble dribbles it down the floor. Gets to Miller. Miller goes down. And Maddie Shylock uh, just politely grabbed that ball. I thought it was a pretty quick call there on the jump ball. And Punksy's ball via the possession arrow. Weaver brings that ball off over half court. Gets it over to Chloe Presloy. Presloy drives atop the key. It being guarded by Miller. Weaver drives baseline, and she's going to get slammed to the floor. I believe that's going to be Cook on the foul. Yep. She's going to Cook her first foul, and Weaver's going to go to the foul line to shoot two. First shot's up. Good. Second shot coming. Good. Marion Center driving the ball up the floor. Miller goes right down on the right side and, oh, just misses that. Nice rebound by Coble. Two rebounds and she misses that second shot. There's going to be a foul called on Coble. It was more or less an incidental foul, if you ask me. Uh, Riley got the rebound and Coble turned around to run up the floor and Ran into her. That's just a incidental foul. Kind of, kind of stink, but it is what it is. She plays on. It's only her second foul. Weaver stops. She thought about that three. She thought about it a couple times. I seen her looking, and she smiled at herself there. And should have took that shot. I know that's what she was saying. Shyock's not going to not take it. Misses. Miller with the rebound. She comes flying down the floor. Stops. Pops a 12-footer. No good. Nice rebound by Cook, and she puts it away. Her first two points of the game for Shauna Cook. Chloe Presley brings the ball up over the timeline. And looking for some help, gets it over to Caitlin Gribble. Gribble looks inside. Kirsten missed her pick, and that ball's going to be stolen away by Ackerman. Ackerman brings the ball up over the floor, being guarded by Presley. A shot by Armstrong, no good. Rebound by a short... Uh, he called that a little bit early. It would have been Punksy's ball anyways, I think. But and It's going to be out of bounds on a short three by Ackerman. She looks disgusted in herself. For the, it was a pretty deep three for her, and she misses, and uh, reasonably so. Is she not happy about the miss? And that ball's going to be thrown out of bounds by Weaver. Both teams playing pretty sloppy here to start the second half. Armstrong inbounds that ball to Miller. Miller gets it up over half court. <clears throat> gets it over to Ackerman. Nice bounce into Miller. She underhands it in. No good. And it's going to be a foul on Armstrong. So the Cousins both have three fouls here in the early going. And substitute in. You know, a lot of these, a lot of these Marion Center girls uh, played softball with. Uh, and I work with Mr. Lipsy, and I play a lot of softball with the Elkins, and uh, and by acquaintance uh, with uh, Armstrong is uh, the Elkins' sister. So I met all these kids, uh, uh, know all these kids from their parents, and. Uh, 
enjoy seeing them on the floor. They're about my, my daughter's age. Uh, my daughter, a junior in high school, doesn't play any sports, but Weave gets that ball ripped away by Miller and her way to the hoop. Get off the soapbox and back to the basketball game here. Ackerman looks to drive right, being guarded by Gribble, and she fires it up, no good. And Chloe, Re Chloe Presley with the rebound, and she's driving the ball up the floor, and it's going to be a blocking call, I believe, on. I don't know. I mean, that was <laughs> Chloe. Chloe had a full head of steam going down the floor there, and sort of just ran into. It's going to be three fouls on Jersey Coble. So we have Lipsy entering the game. And they get that ball into Chloe Presloyd. Presloyd for three. Drains it. Nice job by Chloe Presloyd. Taking that three over Lipsy. See what that ball looks inside. And it looks for help. They use that pivot. Gets it to Ackerman. Ackerman back to Armstrong. Evidently the coach trusts Armstrong with three fouls, and she takes it to the hoop. Nice job by Nevada Armstrong for two. Danielle Gribble drives the lane. She is stopped by Shauna Cook. They get it into Caitlin Gribble. Gribble just can't finish on that spin move at the block, and they get that ball to Armstrong. On the right side, she dribbles out in three-point land. Gets it in to Cook, and she puts it in, and going to have a chance for the end one is Shauna Cook. That's good. And Maddie Shyock picks up her second foul. Weaver's going to come in for K-9. Get herself a break. Score sits 48-27 with 3.35 here to go in the third period. Cook takes her in one shot. And it's going to be rebounded eventually there by, and, oh, I'm not sure what, and she is not happy about it. She hustles her way back down the floor. Chloe Presley takes it to the hoop and puts it away for two. Nice job by Chloe. That's Allison Samatoski. She ended up with that ball underneath her own hoop and just made an errant pass. And there's Weave with a steal off of Armstrong, and Weave takes it to the hoop and just doesn't get it above the rim high enough. Uh, she'd have about 20 points here tonight or today if uh, she made those made those few layups. I feel for her. I mean, sometimes you have those days where it just doesn't go your way. So that ball tipped out of bounds by Chloe Presloyd. Armstrong inbounds it to Ackerman. Ackerman spins, takes a look at the floor there, being guarded by Chloe Presloyd. And they get it around to Armstrong. Armstrong takes it into the lane, a little floater off the glass high, and it's going to be out of bounds on Marion Center. K9 comes in for Caitlin Gribble. Danielle Gribble inbounds it to Presloid, Weave, drives the lane, going to be fouled by Sematoski. Goes to the line for two shots. Weaver with her first shot. It's up, and good, nothing but net. Nice job by Weave. Second shot coming. It's up and on its way. Uh, in and out. No good. Lipsy with the rebound off the tip. Ackerson drives the ball up over half court. Gets it down low to Sematoski. And she puts it up. No good. Gets her own rebound. Puts it up off the front of the iron. No good. And it's going to be stolen away by Cook. A deep three by Ackerman. And it's good. Alexa Ackerman drains a deep three for Marion Center. The score sits 51 to 30 with 2.07 to go here in the third period. She brings the ball up over half court. Chloe Presloyd with it. Over to K9 to Daniel Gribble. She drives into the lane. Back out to Shyock for a 13 footer and she drains it. Her first two of the game. Maddie Shyock gets her name in the scoring column. 
Ackerman fires another three. She's feeling it. She drains another three for Marine Center. Gribble gets it over to Weaver. Weaver drives it around. She's going to stop. Thought about that three. Shyock thought about it and took it. No good. Semitoski with the rebound. Gets it to Nevada. Armstrong brings it up over half court. And it's going to be a pop. I think she was going <laughs> to. Lipsy going to set a pick for Armstrong. And Armstrong <laughs> threw the ball. Uh, somehow Lipsy came out of there with it. Good for her. And Armstrong bringing that ball around. Gets it over to Lipsy. Lipsy fires at three. Off the iron. No good. Weaver tips it over to Shyock and gets it to Chloe Presloy. Presloy to head to Danielle Gribble. Gribble being guarded by Lipsy, and she's going to get too much of the arm. So says the referee. Maya Lipsy, her first foul. Danielle Gribble to the line for two. First shot's up, and good. <laughs> Presley's going to get a break. Amy Poole comes in, and Shyock's going to get a break as Caitlin Gribble comes back in. Let's see, up by 21. I think they'd start filtering some of, her, some of their JVs in here, get them a little play, playing time. Samatoski with the rebound. She's. Uh, Samatoski needed to give that ball up by the looks of it. And we, with the rebound on that miss by Gribble, she's going to get two shots. Green 21, that's Ackerman with her second foul. Samatoski did, did a good job of getting the rebound. Uh, unfortunately for her, just a little, bit, uh, a little bit crazy coming down the floor and ended up losing that ball. Armstrong and Ackerman need to go to her on that rebound and get that ball from her. And second shot's good by Weave. Ackerman with that ball brings it up, floor. And gets it down low to Lipsy. Lipsy looks inside. And she bounces it over to Armstrong. Armstrong turns around, surveys the scene. And she being guarded by Amy Poole. Gets it over to Cook. Cook driving her way in. Stops. Takes a little eight-footer over a canine and hits it. Does Sean Cook. Looks down low to canine. Gets it over to Weave as she comes flying down the lane and misses the lay-in. And it's going to be a... Jump ball going Marion center way. Nice, nice pass by K9 there on uh, to Weave as she was screaming down the key right down the middle, and Weave just couldn't find that, couldn't find that shot. Nice job down low to Armstrong. She saves it out of bounds. She stepped on the line as she tried to save it. Going to go back Punksy way. Score 56-35. 10.4 seconds here to go in the third period. And they get it over to Danielle Gribble. Gribble with five seconds to go. She stops, takes a little five-footer. No good. Gets her own rebound, puts it back up. No good. And that's going to end the third period. The score sits 56-35 in favor of Punksy. We'll be back for the third period. In just a few, you're listening to a... Punksy Sports Day on Fox Sports 100.9. You're watching your favorite show, and you get a text. Looks like you just bought a diamond bracelet for $5,900 in Las Vegas. Or at least someone tried to. See, you've got Card Valet from Marion Center Bank. You can turn your debit card on and off when you want. Set spending limits and receive alerts when your card is used. Download the app to your phone, register your card, and you're done. And you can get back to your show Card Valet, only with Marion Central Bank. Member FDIC. Punxsie High School Hoops on Fox Sports. <laughs> Welcome back here to Punxsie High School. We're ready to start the fourth and final quarter here between the Lady Stingers and the Lady Chucks. Punxsie out to a 56-35 lead at the moment. And it's going to be Punksy's ball via the possession arrow. Gribble going to take that ball out on the floor for Punksy's Gribble. Chloe Presloid, Caitlin Gribble, Sarah Weaver, and K-9. And for Marion Center, we have Miller, Cook, and Armstrong, Coble, and Cook, Coble, Armstrong. 
Ackerman, that's who I was missing. As she drives down, takes a left-handed layup, a little bit short. And looking ahead to K-9. K-9 going to take it down in the key, gonna, stolen away, and then she steals it back off of her and misses the layup. Punksy is having some real trouble today making those easy layups. And Miller takes it to the hoop, no good. Jersey Coble gets a rebound, two rebounds. And actually, that was Miller that got that. Or, yeah, it was Coble. She got, got the foul. Going to go to the line here with 7.14 to go in the fourth period. First shot missed. Second shot. Fires it up. And misses it, too. Caitlin Gribble with the rebound. She's going to bring it up for herself. Hands it off to Sister Danielle. She drives around. Gets it to K9. K9 looks inside. Hands it off to Caitlin Gribble. Or Danielle Gribble, my bad. And she makes that layup. Does Danielle Gribble. Gribble's only a, a sophomore, if I'm not mistaken. No, she is a freshman and doing a great job for Punksy. Uh, I think a yeah, nice job by Chloe Presley getting in the passing lane as she takes it to the hoop. Misses a layup. Like I said before, Punksy is just subpar here today on simple layups. If I was Coach Carlson, Monday's practice, I don't know if they practice on Sunday. I'd, hopefully not for the girls' sake, but Monday's practice would be full of full-speed layups. Uh, that's one thing you see before the games. These girls get out here practicing their layups, and they go about half speed as what they usually do coming down the floor, and then, well, it makes a big difference. Uh, they need to go full speed all the time. And that ball off the front of the iron, Cook, a little body on body there. Kirsten Raleigh going to pick up her third foul, and Shauna Cook's going to go to the line. Actually, second foul for K9, my bad. I thought she had two, but she only had one. Score sits 58-35 with 6.09 to go here in the fourth period. First shot, no good by Cook. Maddie Shiaw going to come in for K9. We'll see on a one-on-one situation, anytime Marion Center fouls here, they have seven fouls, does Marion Center. Second shot, good by Cook. And Weave inbounds that to Danielle Gribble. Gribble brings it up over half court. Looks for some help. Gets it to Caitlin Gribble. Hand is off to Danielle Gribble. Being guarded by Armstrong. Tightly guarded. They get it into Chloe Presley. Back out to Caitlin Gribble. Dribbles it off of her knee. Gets it in underneath. Nice job. Oh, it's going to be foul. Not sure who that's going to be on. 30. That's going to be her fourth foul. It's Jersey Coble. I'm looking for Elkin to get back in the game. 5.50 to go. She only has three fouls. I just let her have some uh, have some time on, on the floor there. You get five, you can't take them with you, so you might as well use them up. That's what I always told the boys. My coach, Weave, makes her first one. And just as I said that, I should have been a coach. Second shot's good, and in comes... Keely Elk. Is Jersey Coble going to get a break? Sure, they'll give her a couple minutes and let her have at it. She fouls out with a couple minutes to go. Oh, well. And Armstrong with it. Gets it to Elkin. Elkin drives around the right side. And she draws a foul. Right off the bat, I believe that's going to be Shylock with the foul. Yes, her third. Elkin toes the line. And she puts her first point of the game on. I'm sure she wasn't one to put her first point of the game on with 5.39 to go left in the game. Second shot's good. Her and Jersey Coble must go to the same school foul shooting because they both get the ball. No, no dribbles, no messing around. They put her in. Weave drives around to the top of the key. Gets it over to Caitlin Gribble. Gribble gets it to Danielle Gribble. Crosses over, looks back. Weaver cuts in. 
Chloe Presloyd says, I'll take that three. And she misses it. Elkin with the rebound. She drives the ball up the floor. She's going to go right to the hoop. Blocked by, it's going to be fouled again by Caitlin Gribble, and she's smiling. I don't think she agreed. Score sits 50-38 with 5-10 to go here in the fourth period. Elkin makes her third point of the game. And K-9 comes back in for Caitlin Gribble. That's her third foul is Caitlin's. Elkin's second shot. Good. Nothing but net. Nice shot by Kaylee Elkin on her foul shooting there on second trip down the floor since she came back in the game. And she has four points to show for it. And that ball is going to be almost stolen away. And I don't know what. It was stolen away eventually. It's Chloe tried to bump it back out to weave. And Lydia Miller got in the way of it. And she got. I don't know what happened. She's grimacing pretty bad over there. It's. Her and Weaver come together. A little crazy shot there by Kaylee Elkin. Doesn't make it. And Lydia Miller is short on the three off the front of the iron. Caitlin Gribble with the rebound. 4.33 to go here. Score sits 60 40 in favor of Punksy. Play Presloid back out to Shyock. Shyock head fake. Not, doesn't fool shot, uh, Shauna Cook. Nice pass by Chloe Presloid to K9 for a two. Ackerman drives into the lane, tries an underhand layup. Mm, no foul and a block. I'm not sure who got that block on there, but and that ball. <laughs> Shyock loses her balance, goes down, but it's going to be Punksy's ball as it was tipped by Shauna Cook. And Daniel Gribble is going to inbound that pass, or in, inbound the ball. Shyock gets a break, regain her composure. Get it out to Presloid. Presloid drives on. Gives it back to Danielle Gribble. Gribble for three. Oh, off the iron. No good. And Caitlin Gribble, lefty, no good. And Elkin gets it ahead. Nice pass by Caitlin Gribble to K9 for two. Hey, a nice pass by uh, Ackerman. Just off the mark is Shauna Cook on that spin put back and no good. Nice pass by Weave to Caitlin Gribble. And it's going to be 66 to 40. And as I look over, all the Punksy JV players are taking off the. <laughs> Danielle Gribble tries to get that ball to Chloe Presloy. And we got substitutes coming for Punxsutawney as the starters are going to. Probably not find the floor again, I'm going to guess. So we have Amy Poole coming in. And Raleigh Dover Spike coming in. And Armstrong gets it back to Kaylee Elkin. Elkin drives, fires that ball up. Cook gets it. She's in a predicament. Tries to Timeout, Marion Center. So we'll take one with the team. You're listening to a Punxy Sports Day on Fox Sports 100.9. Apple Midtown Auto Parts knows do it yourself. It's a new year. Might as well start it out on the right foot. Buy a Napa Legend battery or a Napa Legend premium battery and get up to $20 with a mail in rebate. And you know, Napa has a windshield washer if you're low. Be sore for details. No do it yourself. Napa Midtown Auto Parts. Find us at 110 South Gilpin Street, Carson. Open 8 to 6, Monday through Friday, Saturday 8 to 5. That's Napa, Midtown Auto Park. On C High School Hoops on Fox Sports. FM 100.9 WECZ. So in the game for Punksy now is... We have Dobbins in there, number three. We have 21, Riley Dover Spike. Dobbins comes out of there with the rebound. And Daniel Gribble, Amy Poole, and Maddie Shyock in the game for Punksy. And 2.48 to go here. Score sits 66 to 40. Dobbins dribbles it over, gets it to Shyock. And she gets it across to Daniel Gribble. And it looks like Emily McMahon's going to end up getting her way into the game. Poole takes it into the key. 
Dobbins for nice 12 foot. Nice rebound on her part. Puts it back up. No good. Gets her own rebound again and puts it in for two. Finally, Emily Dobbins finishes. And Elkin going to, oh, she thought about firing that three up, but Riley Doverspike was heading her way, getting in her face. And a little ill advised shot there by Ackerman as she got bound up and just fired that ball up. And it was going to be stolen away by Elkin. Nice job by Danielle Gribble to save that. As if I was Punksy, I'd just call a timeout and get her get his subs in over there. Uh, two more of the JV players and all the players for Marion Center. Okay, it's going out of bounds. We're going to get those players all in the game. And I'm not going to know half of them, but we'll give it a whirl. Olivia Burkett in for Punksy, as well as Emily McMahon. Thirteen, Olivia Burkett. So McMahon, oh, that was luckily there. Emily Dobbins vacated the premises, and <laughs> yeah, it was luckily somebody was in that. And it stays Punksy ball. It's going to be off of Miranda Leisure. We have the sister to Kaylee Elkin, Kennedy, in the game. Not sure who double ought is. I didn't see that number in the book that I had uh, earlier, so I'll have to see if I got that picture here again. And Punksy steals that ball back, heads back up the floor as McMahon, dishes it out to Burkett. Little head fake, doesn't pull some Matoski, gets it back to El, uh, uh, McMahon, to Dobbins, over to Dover Spike. She takes a quick two, no good. Rebound by Miranda Leisure. And double all is Julia Spence. Emily McMahon comes out of there with it. 48 seconds remaining here. Scores 68-40. Nice bounce pass. Going to be off of Simitoski. Stays Punksy ball. Dobbins going to take that ball out. Amy Poole in the game. Along with Burkett. Raleigh Dever Spike and Emily McMahon. Man clears the ball back to Dobbins. Dobbins inside the Dover Spike, and Spence gets a hand on that. Oh, it's going to be off of Dover Spike's head. She comes up with it, gets it down to Olivia Burkett, and she puts it away for two. And we're back to basically the JV game that we already watched once here. So if you folks uh, didn't catch the JV game to start with, we're back at it. It was 17 seconds to go here. Elkin fires up a three, no good. And Dobbins with it, being harassed by Elkin. We're not going to get a free trip down the floor with the ball, that's for sure. Good job on defense by Kennedy Elkin. And we're down to point one seconds, and that's all she wrote, folks. The score ends up 70 to 40 in favor of Punksy. We'll add up some scores, come back for our post-game show. You're listening to a Punksy High School Sports Day on Fox Sports 100.9. Matey, what kind of fancy treasure chest be this? What? Oh, this is not a treasure chest. This is an ATM machine. I can access my money here or at any other ATM across the world with my in-first bank card. Yeah, in this in-first bank, you speak of, hold your gold. 